Let's begin. In alhamdulillah, certainly our praise and gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nahmaduhu and we praise him and we thank him. And we ask for assistance for all matters of life. That's a tough one. It's a really tough one. ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسول الله سيدنا ابوك اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته فلا تموتن ولا الا وانتم مسلمون and also elsewhere Allah says يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله be aware be mindful of Allah be conscious of Allah وَقُولَ قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا And say beautiful, respectful, clear language. Communicate clearly. Communicate without ambiguity. Communicate with truth. Communicate with facts. Don't misconstrue things. Don't just make up things. Don't just say things to win. Don't just get into arguments and just want it to win. So you just say whatever you want to say. You can see it today, right? With all atrocities is taking place. Anybody wants to take it on their own way, they'll create audio, video, to their, to, for their own benefit, which most of them, or all of them, are not based on fact or evidence. When you, when you fix your communication, according to the, to the what is acceptable, according to the facts and, and truth, Allah is going to beautify your your deeds, your a'mal, your salihalakum a'malakum is going to make it awesome, it's going to make it beautiful. You're going to exude things out of you, out of everything that you say and you touch and you um, see and walk. And when you do that, Allah says, here's another secret recipe. Whoever follows Allah, whoever obeys Allah, that is to say, whoever follows the prophetic tradition, certainly has won incredible victory. Fawzan Adima incredible victory. So I'm going to give you a quick preview. It is going to be, inshallah, short and sweet uh, khutbah. A quick preview of what I am going to cover tonight. I invite you all to come, inshallah, if you can. You should be able to. What else are you going to do? There's no 49ers playing tonight. Um, so at 7 o'clock, inshallah, I'll start. And here's the, the thing. that this, The topic was picked a long time ago. It's going to be the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He did many, many, many du'as, but there's one particular section in Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm going to focus on that and the implication of that to our lives today and specifically the correlation to, to the seerah. So it's one of those subjects that hasn't been touched much, and I love it. I, heard, I learned about this some years ago, and it just resonated really, really well, and I loved it so much. And I kept on studying, kept on studying. So I'm going to give you some some tips and tricks, inshallah, tonight. But here's, uh, here's a preview for it. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, starting from Ayah number 122 to all the way to 130, 31, 32, somewhere around there, that, those are the things that we're going to cover. Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaldakum ala al-alameen. Addressing the children of Israel, saying, remember, you need to remember. You need to remember all the awesome things that I've given you, all the bounties, all the favors, Allah says, all the favors that I've given to you. One of the favors was this. Just check this out. For generations, for generations, every one of them used to get their own customized profit. Imagine sitting in Dublin, Pleasanton, MCC, get your own profit. And that profit is going to directly talk to Allah and give you direct um, revelation and show you the right path and constantly be with you, guide you. When that prophet is gone, another will come to you. And that's gone, another will come to you. Thousands, you know that. We, we, we learned um, that they, they received thousands of prophets. That's one of the incredible gifts they received. There's a bunch of things you can discuss and ask. Then what happened? Well, we all know what happened. But Allah says this. And when it comes to taqwa, here's another definition of taqwa. What taqwa yawma la tajzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a. Protect yourself. One of the meaning of taqwa is protect yourself. Allah says there will be a calm, there will come a day. Regardless of who's oppressing who, regardless of how many atro atrocities you, you create, you commit in this life. 
regardless of how many people's rights you take, regardless of what you think you are doing it right because you are right, Allah says, there will come a day. There will come a day. No one will be able to suffice for another one. You cannot substitute one for someone else. You cannot say, I did this because of this person or that person. Allah, hold, don't hold me in account. Hold the other guy in account. It doesn't work. Allah says, protect yourself from that day, which means protect yourself here in this world. Protect your behavior. Protect your attitude. Protect the way you see life. Protect the way you run your life. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ عَنْهَا مِنْهَا عَدْلٍ and wala taqba wala tanfaha shafa there's two there are two other things it's really amazing the the country i came from the land i came from and also some of the other ones that i lived this is really prominent there are two things that are prominent right one is this if you want to move ahead if you want to do if you want to do, do anything get anything done anything done you want a telephone line in your house you want a cell service anything you can do it authority is not going to listen, listen to you you do one of two things either you bring intercession Someone to intercede for you, someone to do wasata for you. In Farsi, they say wasata. I don't know what this is in Urdu or anything else. You bring someone, or you bring some cash with you. You bribe. Those two methods work. Well, we have the same thing here too in this country. The only thing is we legalized it and we put a beautiful name around it. We call it lobbying, and it's legal term for same thing bribing for same thing doing a wasata. Same same concept. We point finger at, at our culture, but we do the same thing here. Allah says on that day, if you want to bribe someone, if you want to bribe God or anyone else, eh, it's not going to work. doesn't matter what you're going to bring. Bribing is not going to work. Allah says, what about intercession? Shafa'a, that we understand. It's like, no, that's not going to, that's not going to help you either. Because you did something in this earth that you are responsible for and you, don't want, you do not want to take that responsibility, that accountability. Now you bring someone else to help you out here. And it's not going to work. It's clear in the ayah. Wallahum yun sarun and you're not going to be, and they're not going to be helped. There's no help for them. You try to bring someone else to take your spot, that didn't work. You try to bribe, didn't work. This person tried to bribe, didn't work. This person tried to bring a shafa, intercession, didn't work. They're not going to get any help. What is Allah telling you and I? He's telling you and I that you need to take responsibility for your own act, for your own action. That's what he's telling you and I. That's what he's teaching us. I must say one more thing here. We believe in the intercession of our Prophet And it's true. It's real. No doubt about it. We make dua for it. But here's what we misunderstand. The shafa of Prophet ﷺ is true and works only when we take accountability and responsibility to our actions here. That means we correct our own ways of life here on this earth and then ask for that and Allah, inshallah, will accept that. If we run our life the way, they, the way this ayah just, just described, if we run our life like that and then say, oh, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm going to ask for the shafa of Prophet ﷺ, I'm going to be rescued, I'm going to be saved. We are really misunderstanding the shafa'ah. We are not really doing justice to it. What I'm going to talk about tonight, inshallah, is the ayah number 24. Think about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Put yourself in the situation. Just imagine. The, thing, the, kind of, the kind of things he went through, the kind of tests that he went through from a very young age all the way through his end of his life. All the tests that he went through. Allah describes this way. Um, those of you who understand Arabic, the Arabic um, linguistic breakdown of this word is just incredible. Allah says, <laughs> The whole thing is this, uh, in that word. Translation says he completed it. It just doesn't do any justice to the word or what Allah is trying to describe. Allah says he went through incredible tests, one after another, one after another. And guess what? He passed every single one with a flying color. <coughs> Those of you who are students, you know, once upon a time in 1850s when I was a student, there were, there were greats saying A, B, C, Ds and things like that. Allah says Ibrahim alayhi salam scored A plus every single one every single instance and all those tests. 
When he did, Allah said, I'm going to give you a gift. Guess what the gift was? Probably it's not what you think it is, but here's what Allah says the gift was. Inni ja'iluka linnasi imama. Here's your gift, O Ibrahim. You will be the imam for the entire humanity. Imam of entire humanity. Um, what is imam? That's the question. Ibrahim alayhi salam understood immediately what imam is and what is the ramification of that. What does that mean? He understood immediately and he, he, he asked for something, which I'm going to discuss. But let's talk about what is imam. To hold the title imam today, you got to understand, this, this is just not a small thing. Yes, imam means someone to lead. Imam is a leader. That's true. Imam is someone inspires you. Imam is someone guides you. Imam is someone holds your hand at every single step of the way. Imam is someone that is in every fabric of your life is involved to help you out to succeed. Imam is someone who knows the meaning of responsibility. Imam is someone who understands the accountability. Imam is the highest level of leadership you can imagine. All those books of leadership, all those LinkedIn learning leadership that you have learned, you studied, Imam is far, far more than any one of them. He understood that. He understood that this is incredible responsibility. On top of it, imam for the entire humanity. Linnasi, not for your two kids and household and all that. No, entire humanity. It's not a simple thing. It's not a small thing. What does that mean? That means at the end of the day, Allah just said, protect yourself from that day in the last day. That means as an imam, as a leader, he is responsible for everyone, for everyone from 10,000 years ago when he, when he was born until now, until end of the time. Anyone who walks on this earth is part of human, part of linnas, that he is responsible for all of them. It's not a small thing. That means Allah is going to ask about so-and-so in 2050 did something did your guidance reach the guy? He's responsible. Well, he wanted to say something immediately. And guess what he said? Qala, Ibrahim talks. He says, what about my progeny? What about my kids, grandkids, great kinds, great, 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 great grandkids until in the time? What about them? Ya Allah, can you help them out also? And he was expecting to hear from Allah, of course, you're the imam. But that's not what he heard. Allah says, La yanalu ahdul zalimeen. When it comes to my promise, Allah says, it does not extend to those who are zalim. Imagine, zalim. Those who are wrongdoers. Those are who constantly go against the truth. Who constantly go look for the loophole, constantly wants to do something else, constantly cause atrocities. You can imagine, right? Right now, the, the gazillion names in your head comes from today's, uh, today's uh, situations to whatever in the past history. Another word, Allah is saying, from your progeny, there will be good ones, there will be really bad ones. Allah says, I'm not going to make the promise to you that I'm going to save every single one, including the bad ones. That's not going to be the case. It really shakes up. Ibrahim alayhi salam really shakes him up. And he's like, from my progeny, and I'm going to be imam, I'm going to be responsible for all of them. Um, what does this mean for in my imamship, for my leadership? And he's puzzled, and he's like, hold on a second. You have asked me to build Kaaba. I'm going to build Kaaba, and I'm going to modify my dua, and I'm going to ask something else, which is what you're going to learn tonight, inshallah. <laughs> Allah says, I'm not going to do Allah says in his book, I'll be lahim the shaitan or regime. 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا واخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين امين ورحمه الله وبركاته I'm sure you all know this dua if you don't know it memorize it in the surah al-baqarah keep on keep on saying this dua there's so many other duas you can make keep our brothers and sisters in the middle east in mind while you're making this dua by the way speaking of which um i didn't, uh, purposely i didn't want to mention anything about that and in, in the khutbah but here's one request i have from all of you me included in that <clears throat> the atrocities has been going on for generations right for decades seven decades at a minimum um Right now it's topical. Right now it's hot. Right now it's everyone talks about it. Right now we can't avoid hundreds of videos that you can watch. It's easy to be involved and make dua every now and then. But here's the thing: the need is not for one day, one week, two weeks. It becomes stale after after a month, two months, six months. No one remembers it. But the pain is not going to be is not going to be gone. the atrocities of oppression is not going to be gone it's going to last for generations that means you and i have responsibility at the end of the day allah called you and i brothers remember brothers there are two types of brothers you can mention in the quran could have mentioned easily there's ikhwa which allah mentioned which means blood brother imagine this if nothing else please turn off your phones please imagine this your own brother picture your own brother your own blood brother the one that you love the one not the one that you don't like the one that you love a lot you really have respect imagine that something happened to that brother what how would you feel what would you do what would what would you not do to help him out imagine that allah describes our relationship muslims around the world 2.7 billion of us is and you are like blood blood brothers just like your own loving brother that you have so much respect for so which means at the minimum keep him in your dua's please from a month from now six months from now 10 years from now because it's not going to be gone it's not going to go away don't make it stale just keep it fresh and keep that pain help and you know where the politicians going to get hurt when the time of election comes don't give up phone calls don't give up emails don't give up contacting them they're going to ignore you we know that it's going to get ignored but guess what when election comes that's when they're going to that's going to that's what's going to matter and it will matter and those elections happens every november you know that let's let's uh, end with this bismillahir rahmanir rahim inna allaha ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghyi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun this brother is going to lead the prayer inshallah because i already did mine so give us uh, about Stand up. Make your rose, please. Let's give us about a minute.